Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ, and in the video today we're going to uh, uh, discuss how to work split when a DX station is working split, how to improve your chances of getting a contact, uh, in particular on a major de-expedition where there are lots and lots of callers. Uh, the uh, TU5MH de-expedition in the Ivory Coast began today and we're going to use that is an example of how to work split in single sideband and CW to help uh, secure a contact with a needed DXCC country. Let's take a look at a typical scenario. Uh, we're using 40 meters in our example, but it could be any band. And we're also going to assume that uh, if for our example that it's in the CW mode, but this applies uh, equally well to single sideband or even digital modes. Uh, the 40 meter band here is shown divided uh, in the uh, extra portion of the CW portion of the band and the general portion. Uh, CW portion, uh, the extra portion is in red. And let's say for example a DX station uh, comes on and uh, begins calling CQ on 7024 megahertz uh, which is just in the uh, extra portion of the band. If you happen to be a general class licensee, that can be frustrating if that's a, a needed uh, station uh, because it's not in uh, your portion of the band that you're authorized to transmit. So even a major de-expedition will normally start out working simplex, so he'll receive several callers on that simplex frequency. Uh, when the number of callers hinders the ability to make contacts because uh, the callers can't hear the DX station for all the callers, the DX station can't distinguish the callers, and the QSO rate slows down, uh, the DX station might uh, indicate that they're working split. Uh, usually they do this by saying CQ and then saying up, meaning they're going to be listening to callers responding to them higher in frequency than their transmit frequency. Uh, they don't generally start out indicating how far up, usually it's about 2 kcs. Uh, that can vary, uh, but uh, that's a good rule of thumb if, they, if you happen to be trying to get a contact when they first announce that they're working split. Start about 2 kilohertz up and uh, start making your calls. Well this is good news for general class licensees now because you can transmit in the general portion of the band while you're listening to the DX station in the extra class portion of the band. So they will begin to start receiving calls there and if they get too many calls on that split frequency they may announce a frequency range or they just may begin to start listening over a range of frequencies without even announcing it. Hopefully the DX station is going to announce that they're listening up every time they call for a new contact. Uh, they might say QRZ up, uh, just meaning they're working split, so callers will know not to call them on their transmit frequency. But let's say, for example, in this case, the DX station announces they're going to be listening from 7025 to 7030 kilohertz in that range. So now the callers should start calling somewhere in that range. Uh, the uh, DX station at that point in time, uh, each, uh, each DX operator usually has the technique that they're familiar with and how they're going to work split. Uh, some of them are just random jumpers, I'll call them. And they might just tune across the, uh, the, the range of frequencies until they pick out a call sign and then work someone there and then go on to another call sign that they pick out and just randomly move around within their listening range making contacts. The most common, especially in the major D expeditions with the experienced DXers, is that they'll start listening near the bottom of the range and keep working stations until they have too many callers on that frequency and they'll move up just a little bit until they pick out another call sign and work people on that frequency until there are too many callers, then they'll continue to move up through the range that they announce they're listening in. And when they get to the top, they may either go back to the beginning or they may work their way back down that range. 
and they may work their way back up. Most of the time they'll go up to the top of their range and then after that go somewhere back near the bottom of the range and work their way back up again. So you as the operator needing a contact with this rare DX station uh, would be very beneficial for you to know what method the DX operator is using when they're working split. Now we're going to get into how to do that later on, but uh, basically what you want to do is stay just one small step ahead of them. Now this, this graph is indicating that's about 500 cycles. Uh, now you may not actually tune 500 cycles, it may just only be 100 or 200 cycles above. Uh, so every time they finish a QSO, if you have identified that they're moving up the band to look for their next call sign for a contact, if you can stay one step ahead of them as they do that, you're going to greatly improve your chances of making a contact. Uh, some other tips. When a major de-expedition first goes on the air, the pileups are huge. Toward the end of the de-expedition, a lot of the big gun stations that are hard to bust through have already made their contacts on those bands and modes and sometimes very rare DXCC entities toward the end of the expedition are calling CQ for lengthy periods of time and not getting a response because m most of the stations that wanted them have worked them. So if you have a hard time getting through at the beginning of a de-expedition, keep trying. Wait until the end of the expedition and try it. You might find it's very easy to get contacts toward the end of an expedition. Be patient. Propagation conditions change near sunup and sundown, near gray line. Uh, if a DX needed DX station is very weak and not getting through, especially if you're within a couple hours of sunup or sundown, be patient and wait, and their signal will sometimes drastically improve, and uh, you will be able to get through uh, as propagation conditions change. Take advantage of memory keyers to send your call sign. Uh, nothing is more frustrating than sending CW and accidentally messing up a character of your call. And that happens to be the one the DX station copied. Copied your call incorrectly, sent you a signal report, and lost you in the QRM and moved on. You know he logged, you know he heard you, you know he logged your call improperly, and you it didn't get in his log correctly. Uh, if you use a memory keyer or memory keyer in your rig from a keyboard, you can just press a key on your keyboard or a button on your memory keyer or a button on your rig and send your call sign. It's going to be sent correctly and quickly and if you accidentally or if you're using some paddles or a key and you accidentally send it incorrectly, uh, that may be the one they copied and uh, will force you to have to make another insurance QSO to make sure you get the contact. Use QSO confirmation sources such as Logbook of the World and Club Log. Uh, working that rare DXCC entity won't accomplish anything if you don't get it confirmed. I'm finding it more and more expensive and more and more difficult to, QS, to exchange QSLs by mail. Uh, a lot of ham operators don't like taking international reply coupons anymore because they have such a difficult time exchanging them for postage, uh, forces a trip to the post office, uh, so you, s you wind up sending cash and that winds up not arriving because uh, criminals are realizing that cash is sent in the mail a lot of times to ham radio operators. Uh, Logbook of the World, if everyone used Logbook of the World it would solve that problem. Uh, Logbook of the World, I did a, a very uh, major video on Logbook of the World. Look on my playlist, uh, run my call sign at qrz.com, K8BZ, go to qrz.com, search for K8BZ. At the top of my QRZ webpage there are two links to two different playlists on YouTube. One of them will have a video on how to use Logbook of the World and three ways to upload logs to Logbook of the World. Uh, it's nearly free to use until you get the confirmations confirmed. It's pennies on the dollar what it costs to get a confirmation any other way. Uh, the second best resource in the world for DXers is Club Log. I 
won't get into that right now. I plan on doing another uh, video on club log in, in the near future. Club log is one of the greatest resources for DXers since Logbook of the World and uh, it will allow you to get some things confirmed that Logbook of the World doesn't even confirm. Some DX operators don't use Logbook of the World but use some resources in club log to confirm a QSL by sending a QSL card and it eliminates the risk of sending cash through the mail and it's much more reliable return rate than sending cash through the mail. So watch for my club log instructional video in the near future. Get a confirmation for every band and mode that you work for a rare DXCC entity. Uh, your goal right now might just be to confirm 100 countries for DXCC. Uh, that may change in the future once you have gone well beyond your first hundred in co uh, countries for DXCC you may become interested in confirming it on different modes on CW, sideband, or digital. So if you work a DX, rare DXCC entity all on 20 meters in three different modes, confirm all three modes. If you wait 10 years and try to go back and confirm that RIDI contact or that PSK contact on a band that you confirmed a sideband contact on, you might not be able to get it confirmed anymore. So uh, while you've got it, if you're getting a card anyways, confirm every band and every mode that you work. Now you don't need to reconfirm the same band and mode, but uh, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to get it the first time around than go back years after the contact and, and try to get it then. So with that we're going to uh, switch over to uh, the radio and we'll talk about how to actually work uh, some of these uh, split operations. Okay, we have a de-expedition today, just started today, so this is a good good example to use because there are going to be lots of callers. Uh, this is uh, Ivory Coast, Tango Uniform 5 Mike Hotel, and he's working split on 17 meters. Uh, his transmit frequency is 18-122 and he's listening up working split now we there's quite a quite a range of frequencies here that uh, the, that he's listening on so we need to first uh, try to figure out what technique he's using so we're gonna set this up for split uh, this is an ICOM 7600 now they have a one most modern rigs have a one button split feature if you push and hold the split button it's gonna equalize the two VFOs uh, the VFO we are listening to this station on is displayed over here. The VFO we're going to be transmitting on, the frequency is shown here. When I pushed and held the split button, it equalized the two VFOs, it equalized the mode. Uh, on the 7600, uh, there's this nice big white light that comes on that shows you when the split function is enabled. If I turn the split function off, that light goes off. When I turn the split function on, it comes back on. Now I'm going to I'm going to zoom into the band scope display. Right now, the band scope display is showing the band scope across the entire 17 meter band. Now, if I adjust the transmit frequency, you'll see the marker on the band scope moves to indicate what frequency I'm listening on. So we're we're going to put this back on the frequency for the desired station here in the Ivory Coast. It was 18.122. I'm calling my thing to 5.9. Okay, so we're, we're going to equalize the VFOs. Now it switched the control over to the transmit VFO. Now we're going to change we're going to change the band scope display now. Instead of tuning across the whole band, we're going to center the receive frequency in the middle of the scope. On a uh, ICOM 7000, you push the center button and now that centers at his frequency 18.122 in the middle of the scope and then it shows you how far off the center frequency you can tune your transmit frequency. And you can change the span. This is plus 5 kilohertz, plus 10 kilohertz. I can push this button and change it. Now it's 10, 20, 30, 20, 40, 60, 
and you want to pick a range that's going to include most of the area that that, that station is listening in. So let's start here in the 5, 10, and 15 kilohertz span. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is make a marker that will show our transmit frequency on the band scope. So we can push the marker button, add another marker. Now as you see as I tune up in transmit frequency, you'll see a marker will go up that will show on the band scope where we're listening. So basically over this range from about uh, 4 kilohertz on up to about 15. So there are people calling him over a 10 kilohertz range. So we need to see where he's listening in that 10 kilohertz range, see if he's moving up, moving down, moving around randomly. We can do that by listening on our transmit frequency at the same time we're listening on our receive frequency. Okay, now there's our Ivory Coast station. Now we're going to turn on the dual watch function. Actually, it's on already. And this is a volume... well, let me, let me uh, zoom out a little. This is the audio gain for our receive frequency. So that's our desired station. That is the gain control. Gain control for listening on our transmit frequency. So we're going to. We're going to try to find a station he's working. Seems to be jumping back, back and forth between about five, five up and ten up. Thank you. Kilo 8, Bravo Zulu. Kilo 8, Bravo Zulu. Uh, QSL, you're 5-9 in Michigan. Thanks. Okay. This guy was basically going back and forth between about 5 up and 10 up. So we, we were listening for the stations he worked and trying to, to get our calls on or near that frequency after he completed a contact. So he's also on uh, 20 meters CW right now. So we'll get set up down there and see if we can get him on CW also. So in order to get set up on CW, um, just going to go down to 20 meters and actually he's on, uh, he was spotted, I'll see if, I don't know if this will show up or not, he was actually spotted here on my log program, my log program is interfaced with the rig so basically all I have to do is click here and that will put me on that frequency. Uh, as you can see, he was spotted on, let's see if I can find it, 14.028. And when I clicked on that, it put the transceiver on 14.028 because I have the rig interface with the log program. So I'm on 14.028. I'm going to hold the split button. The band scope is still centered. The marker is still set up. It, now, the split on CW usually isn't as broad as the split on phone because it's a narrower signal. So I can narrow the span a little bit. Let me go down to there. Now, this, this is going to be 1 to about 4 up. And now, you'll see all of, the, all of the blips here on the scope. Those are probably the callers. We'll put on dual watch and give a listen. All these stations throughout that range. So we'll, we'll wait and see, see where he's listening. That's our guy. Just said thank you. So the next caller is going to be calling. We'll go back to the sub band.
Now let's just listen to what he's doing here for a minute. That would be a deliberate QRMer. There. Simple as that. Now, he worked in Italian station. I'll turn the volume down. He worked in Italian station and he was listening across this range here from about plus one is where they were sending one kilohertz high to about uh, up to about four. When he worked that Italian station I listened on the on the his receive frequency and found the Italian station about two and a half kilohertz high. As soon as he finished that contact I put my call out there he answered my call and we got our second contact here with the Ivory Coast and let me get that in my log Hang on. And I can just I can just click on it, on him here and he'll put his call in my log on the 20 meter frequency. And I'll tab through these fields and it'll insert the date and time and the mode and the signal report and log it. So there we are. We've got two Ivory Coast contacts here logged within uh, seven minutes of one another by working split finding the frequency that he made the contact on the, the frequency of the station he made the contact on determining whether they were going up or down in this case he was still staying on that frequency he made the previous contact on but when they get too many callers he'll move usually higher but uh, was able to, with just a couple of calls, get a sideband contact on a new band and a uh, CW contact on another new band, uh, which will help toward my DXCC Challenge Award. And that's how, we, that's how you work split. Listen on the transmit frequencies, find the station he worked. If he's moving up, get slightly above that. If he's staying put, call on that frequency. Wait until the contact is done and call on that frequency. And then you can... Uh, Keep adding to your country totals. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.